Welcome to Touched and Empowered, a show created to empower individuals to value their lives by hosting think tank discussions that will inspire positive action. Touched and Empowered with Katie and Ace starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Touched and Empowered. We're here with Ron Rosnick and Vivian Gaspar. So these two wonderful individuals are business partners on an incredible venture, and they're going to tell us more about their production company. Is it a production company or is it more of like Absolutely. a it's, yay, production company and the it's stories a, behind how yeah, they it's started Yeah, it's a it. production company with a mission mm. to do good. Right? To do large scale good as often and as frequently as we can. So funny enough, Katie and I have talked about bringing in aligned partners and speaking with aligned partners. Funny enough, when you mentioned your mission statement, you haven't even looked at our website yet. And I know you have, not, which isn't a bad thing because I didn't send it to you. My bad. But <laughs> when you see the mission statement and how you worded it just before this podcast, you'll see how aligned we really are. And I'm excited for you to see that synchronicity. Other than that, awesome. I'm going to, thank you. I'm going to be believers in synchronicity. Yes, we are. Yeah magic of the universe. I'm going to pass it over to Katie to ask our first question. And I love it when you do that because it gives me a second to go, mm, universe, tell me what to ask. So the beauty of this is I describe our podcast as we like to talk to people who have been had something that has touched their lives and have chosen to be empowered by it instead of being victimized by it. And before we started recording, you had shared the mission statement for your company. Can you Tell us what that is again and how it came about. Sure. Our, our mission is to empower our viewers with actionable steps to improve their lives. Um, and this came about with um, an opera. Vivian is a book author. She wrote several, a book series called Stop My Crisis and uh, was invited by Princeton TV to do a pilot TV talk show episode. So she needed to partner with somebody, turns out to be me. Um, to help her produce, um, create, uh, refine, and just to uh, help the trajectory of uh, what this all became, which was, mm -hmm. which became three different TV talk shows ultimately. Um, having Vivian be the host for one, I'm the host for another, and we, as a combined team, host a third show. And um, we evolved. Yeah. And uh, we, Vivian petitioned the Board of public access of New Jersey to change their bylaws. And this has never been done in deck at all. Since the inception 25 years ago, prior to my um, fervent lobbying that took six months. Yeah. And as a result, we became the first uh, third party contributors to this public access network. And that opened us up to many T broadcast TV stations. We are now on 99 broadcast TV stations around the country and about 25 countries worldwide. And what you need to know is that in order to upload content television episodes prior to our lobbying efforts in 2016, you had to be a television station manager in order to control the, and to be a member of the organization and to have the episodes uploaded. And we weren't looking to be TV station managers. We just wanted to have our content accessible worldwide. Uh, and there was 2,500 TV stations participating where they have their content on this server, the proprietary server. And that is how we went from airing on one to currently 99, but there's so much more room for growth. And they're really happy with what we do. We interview other subject matter experts that span from personal challenges, could be divorce, child neglect, elder care abuse, addiction, drug addiction. Um, um, depression um, and and business and business uh, business topics as well. Building business credit, how not to get hacked with Trojans and things like that. So it spans oh, the gamut as long as it fulfills our mission statement to empower other people. But there's been so many more. We touched on topics of domestic violence in a myriad of ways. There was actually numerous episodes addressing it because it affects so many. And one of our absolute favorite ways to um, to work on these various topics is well basically myth busting so um yeah uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it because I know it already happened on TV so I'm allowed well Ron was really courageous 
and came out on television being uh, interviewed as the host, actually, on our joint TV talk show, The Viv and Ron Show, which is initially Beyond My Crisis, as a heterosexual male victim of domestic violence for numerous years. And people uh, don't realize that that is um, a segment of the population that's effective. And that's why I called him create, you know, really courageous and being willing to do that coming out on television where the show yeah. airs around the world and around the country. And this, this, it's an outlier situation and um, there are people that are stigmatized by it and they won't take action or make admissions, but um, anybody can be a, a, a victim of abuse. And yeah, I'm way stronger than my ex, but out of my chivalrous, chivalrous upbringing, wouldn't hit her back, but would get punched in the face, had um, big kitchen knives thrown at me and plates thrown and uh, not just physical, but a lot of emotional abuse. And um, uh, when it affected my kids, I had to end the, the marriage and file for a divorce, which took five long years. Um, one of the longest divorce cases on, on record there. Um, and I became a single dad back in 2014 to raise my kids, um, which was yeah. really scary and challenging because I couldn't, couldn't even cook. <laughs> yeah, boiling water got burned. But I'd like to add something because Ron's very modest and has forgotten some bigger details, such as his ex actually hired an ex-Marine hitman to um, take care of him. And luckily for that him, I it never came out. That. Um, and oh, by the way, what about the kids being in the foster system because of everything? Yeah, as a result of my ex's false allegations that she's a victim of dom of, of human, trafficking. human trafficking. Thank you. Um, DCP and P or Child Protective Services whisked my kids away and sent me in a trajectory while I to for about eleven months to uh, fight the system and get them back. And he was kicked out of his own home that he owned uh, for quite some time before he even met her. So this I was is... on a temporary restraining order. I do still hold a final restraining order against my ex. And, um, you know, I don't have an expectation that um, that she will be a part of our lives. But I tell my kids, you can have a hope that, um, you know, through curing mental illness, which I've done a lot of research on as, as a result, like bipolar disorder, um, could be a brain trauma from hitting your heads. And, you know, one of the books that I've got is um, this Daniel Amen book, right? At the mm -hmm. End of Mental Illness, which discusses how a head trauma could totally change someone's personality. So um, I'm an advocate for leveraging science and not just um, ostracizing everybody out of existence. And in regards to that exact topic, my three children uh, have had issues that we can pinpoint stemmed from having head trauma, TBI, traumatic brain injury. And uh, it rather would seem rather innocuous, but it's really helpful because if someone's having challenges, uh, a huge range, like my daughter has a stutter who actually was helped by a very well-known, mm -hmm. very powerful hypnotherapist who was actually on our first episode of the uh, Beyond My Crisis, The Vim and Ron Show. Uh, right. We like to bring out um, unique modalities, unique aspects, whatever it takes to get people help. Yeah, we go off the traditional Western medicine FDA path and explore other things that have, people have been benefited by. We've even had a police officer come on and just educate people on what they should know, everything from how to be a responsible party host to how to deal with the police officer during a, tra uh, a regular traffic stop and accident. I mean, we've had all types of, oh, uh, wow. I just realized something. We've actually interviewed 108 experts on over 500 topics, including a billionaire uh, in uh, April of 2022. Yeah. Who might be going to jail um, later this year. I was smiling. He's this, in the crypto space. This is uh, a, a power player in it, when in the cryptocurrency before Terra Luna imploded off as its uh, stable coin, um, which is another podcast, I guess, right? There, <laughs> there's a lot that you guys just unpacked in the last few minutes with everything <laughs> that you've gone through, with every 
person that you've interviewed with every different topic, and all of them are ones that energetically feel heavy, but you guys are making it not heavy with the way how you are expressing it, with the way how you are sharing it. And understanding that breaking the silence on anything takes a lot of courage. Um, and that's because, thank you for saying that. And it's because we want our society to break through the barriers of limited mindset. And and you have these four pillars of, of communication, which we embody also, which is having kindness and love and and deeper understanding so we can connect together. Um, how else will uh, the Palestinians and the people of Israel uh, a piece without well, what, a new level of of understanding. What did Einstein say? Do you remember what Einstein said about uh, the problem? Depending problem on which quote, because Einstein has a lot of really popular yeah. quotes. <laughs> well, the problems can't be solved by the same way of thinking that had created the problem. That is true. And just to let you know, one of the other aspects that we do, uh, at, you know, about helping people with our TV talk shows, um, number one, they are broadcast. They are on uh, cable channels around the country and around the world. Uh, and we work with them carefully for several hours before uh, we interview them. And the the reason for that is we want to make sure they are well equipped with not just bringing out the aspects that help people the most from their knowledge and their expertise, but also what aspects about being on camera should they know to feel comfortable? We normally do three to five camera shoots in a studio and people sometimes get very anxious. I mean, thankfully our work in this type of pre-preparation uh, with our guests has been recognized because we won four awards for it. But what's most important is how the guests feel. Uh, we've had so many shots where they just can't stop laughing or initially they were crying or having a little anxiety attack yeah. and we talked them down off of that. We make sure people are comfortable. But what we had is a little bit of an epiphany um, a few months ago when we're taking our knowledge and how we help people since we're now living in the age of video. Um, my daughter graduated college last year and realized that most of her interviews, if not all, started over Zoom. So now what we do is we are using our expertise in the television production arena uh, doing this for almost eight years, and we are now educating job seekers, starting with college graduates, but all job seekers, to give them the tips and tricks and how to work with the camera to help them gain employment. In 2024 alone, there will be over 4 million college graduates that will now be job seekers. They need to have an edge up for all the people who don't get this secret knowledge we can help them. And so we're going to be going around to colleges and around to employment agencies and helping people understand how to work with cameras to their advantage with all these Zoom interviews for jobs. And there's so many other aspects, like all the people who do Zoom for corporate work, we can help them to get level up on their careers, whether they're self-employed or in sales. Yeah, definitely. So we're doing a lot of keynotes also to help people. Which those are amazing skills that I nobody had pre-COVID because everyone was able to meet in person. And as much as I love the fact that we can do everything online and meet people from all over the country and all over the world and make these fantastic connections, I like that the skills that are used for in front of the camera are very similar to the skills that you use when you are face-to-face -face in person. And I know my skills got rusty. <laughs> <laughs> when I became 100% working from home. Um, so I appreciate what you're doing because I've got a kid in college and I want to make sure that he is set up for success for when he does all of his interviews and stuff when he graduates. Yeah, and it's very common that you, with all your experience, could help your child improve their communication skills, yet they don't really want to listen to you all the time. <laughs> yeah, so, kids don't want to listen to their parents unless they're like forced to. All the time. <laughs> Um, but I did, we did have someone we talked about um, that improves skills with parent-child communication, leveraging neuron mirroring. So there are techniques on how we can be reflective when we communicate with our children and 
transform their the relationship the in a power way. yeah the power mm. of mirror mirror neurons is... neuron mirroring yes do you know about neuron... I do tell us more about that I'm getting well, I'm, I'm getting excited, I wanna... <laughs> but, I yeah, I whatever. know about it I know about it from the work that I do with the teen suicide prevention society where wow. we have tools to help people feel safe talking about suicide because everyone is naturally negatively biased and we all have negative thoughts. It's just, we don't act on them. So I know some of the neuroscience behind the power of conversations and doing something and it gets mimicked and mirrored by the other people who are around us. Um, but I love the right. fact that there are other people who are using the same kind of practice to help people better communicate with their kids, their spouses, their friends, their family, and everything. Because I believe it's all about communication. Yes, it is. And also what you what you touched upon is so important. Dr. Daniel Amen talks about it by coining a term stamping out ants. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the and ants. Ants stand for automatic negative thoughts, right? Yeah, automatic negative thoughts. <laughs> she remembers. Okay. So <laughs> So it's working, right? And, and your brain change your life. Yeah, and it's just uh, really simple. I mean, I'm kind of tired of the buzzword of mindfulness, but it really does touch on. Wait, wait, we had an episode on that on, on our awareness, and if we're aware of how we think, and just say, "Oh, I should, I should can improve that way of thinking," then little by little we'll catch it. And you know what? That also helps, whether we realize it or not. The bottom line is society needs to like us, to have friends, to improve our jobs, to improve our ability to earn a living. We need to come across as likable. That is a layperson term for charisma. So all these little nuances help charisma. And a lot of times people are feeling blocked. And how do you build likability, trust, and charisma when you're talking to a screen and you have the screen in front of you as a camera instead of a human being that we're used to before COVID and now it doesn't seem like it's going to go backward. I mean, for example, Zoom court is here to stay when they saw how effective it was and really, um, you know, cost effective for the courts, but that's in a lot of aspects in, co uh, in corporate world now too. Yeah, that's corporate. But then in interpersonal communication, as I talked about neuron mirroring with a parent and a child, there are other techniques that we have trained people on to improve that communication and just um, kind of breathe a little bit and and energetically, um, like you, what 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 you said before is let people in let and don't criticize overly criticize unless we're asked. Like I offered your critique criticism to improve what we're doing, and yeah. um, if you can get someone to be okay with it, then their egos aren't engaged and things go smoothly. But what people need to realize is even if you're welcomed to criticize, you're given an open invitation, then people have to realize you still can't bombard them because it will still end up making the person feel bad about themselves. Could be. And it, it never could. It, 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 it never is a benefit to any interaction when you end up inadvertently pounding on someone because it's not one or two critiques, it's now 20 or 30. You but need you to still monitor your interaction right. I, I humbly say and i look forward to failure and other people should too because failure is where breakthroughs come out of well what you were saying was very profound in the sense that if people were more open to the feedback they wouldn't receive feedback that didn't create value right you said that the feedback creates value failure is where you find breakthroughs and i 100 percent agree Honestly, that's part of the transformation process in any way, shape, or form. Most of the geniuses of our age, right? Albert Einstein, um, Bach. And I say our age because that's in our history books. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, well, People are trying to age us, right? Yeah, but, but someone more current like Elon Musk, he's failed many times, embraces it. And even though he has um, unique capabilities, he he uh, is a tenacious problem solver and pa impassioned by that. Even if he's a little controversial, that's uh, still we got to find the positive nuggets when yeah. sometimes people could rub some people in society the wrong way. But his mission <laughs> to positive, let's take yeah, positive. But his mission to help the world should be known by people that feel criticized by his 
effervescence, I would say. And but we have several episodes that are still yet to be released that um, are along these cosmic lines. We've interviewed shamans, we've interviewed energy workers. Uh, we love dispelling myths. The power company, the guy in the vegetable <laughs> pole. <laughs> Not that type of energy work. We've been so blessed to work with so many unique individuals, which we genuinely believe have been brought to us um, by the universe, just like we were brought together by the universe, very literally. How did you two meet? That that that's a perfect segue <laughs> that's to that honest. question. Please, please, please enlighten us on on how this synchronicity <laughs> came to be. Um, I will do this. Yeah, she's gonna yeah do I'm it. gonna I'm, do I'll, it. I'll be back. Thank Thank you. Right <laughs> <laughs> there. I've, he's, he's doing that because I've told the story at least 20 to 50 times. <laughs> so um, I actually paid uh, quite a lofty sum of money to learn how to be in, a guest expert on NBC, ABC, CBS, and Fox to my TV coach uh, in 2015. And uh, because if I'm going to write a book series, I'm going to make sure it does a lot to help as many people as I can. Uh, and then when I was interviewed at uh, Princeton Television, for the first time ever, it just came right out of my mouth. It was the last, I remember distinctly, it was the last Friday in April of 2016. And this, <laughs> just 2016. And I remember I just asked, I was introduced to the station manager being a guest on someone's show. And I just said, so can I have my own show? <laughs> I don't know why I said that. And he said, it's six o'clock on a Friday, call me Monday. So I did. He said, come in on Friday to speak in person, even though I lived an hour and a half away. And I had not yet met Ron, to be super clear. And um, well, the interesting part is I pitched him, I explained to him that I have um, you know, two book series where I, I interviewed 50 experts uh, to have a total of 81 topics covered in the two book series. And he, it was then May 6th. He said, come back on May 26th. I had no idea how to host a show. I only knew how to be a guest. On May 16th, um, I had I'd done a lot of keynotes. I probably did over 100 keynotes uh, educating people on my then area of expertise, which was uh, mortgage modification and foreclosure remediation. I helped about 3,000 people stay in their homes. And um, I got a... Um, on May 16th, I got, you know, how you get a lot of um, LinkedIn people requesting to be connected. And one of those people was Ron. He was listed as a realtor. And I said, you yeah, know, that's pretty normal because I gave a lot of speeches uh, educating realtor offices, real estate offices. So um, when he reached out to me, our first conversation was three hours. And uh, he had asked for some advice for a client of his in foreclosure. And I said at the end of the call, I said, well, I had a curiosity. How did you get my name? Was it through LinkedIn? He said, well, no. He got my name because he was finishing up his divorce and he had come across an email that his sister had sent him in 2011, five years prior, inviting him to my first book signing. I and keep he, my emails. I don't know how to let them go. <laughs> and, and I said, wow, that's amazing. And, he, and I said, but why is it so noisy by you? He said, oh, I also do videography, and cinematography. cinematography and videography. And he was in Las Vegas. And I'm like, wow, I just got asked to do my own TV talk show. And I have no idea how to do production. Can you help me? He said, yeah, I'm flying in on the red eye tonight. Let's meet tomorrow. And we started doing uh, the production together from the uh, first day um, because his sister sent him an email that he found from five years prior. Yeah, That's what I mean by the universe brought us together, brought us together at the exact right time. Join us next week as Ron and Vivian talk more about TV production, podcasting, how to connect with your guests, and how they mentor others to do the same. Thank you for joining us. We hope that the discussion today will inspire you to take positive action in your life. Until next week, be empowered.